What is chartreuse? Why can't you find it? And why is it so expensive? All of that and we'll make and drink a chartreuse swizzle today on Make and Drink. Chartreuse is, without a doubt, to me, the most fascinating of liqueurs. If you're not familiar, it's a green herbal liqueur, and it's made by monks. According to legend, in 1605, Henry IV had a manuscript for an elixir of long life, and he had it delivered to the Carthusian monks, and they've been making some version of a liqueur off and on ever since. I say off and on because they were expelled from France multiple times, and production ceased, moved to Spain for some time, and the recipes changed hands. There's a complicated history of arrests, selling the recipes, and even Napoleon demanding all secret recipes and elixirs be reviewed, which in turn forced the monks to hand over the recipe to the French authorities. But the current brand that we know of and are familiar with today was founded in 1840. While the recipe is a secret and only a handful of monks know the exact ingredients, we do know that it contains 130 herbs, plants, and flowers from the French Alps. Carthusians are considered the most radical monks and the strictest religious order of the Catholic Church. Carthusians live most of their lives in complete silence, and they are only allowed to talk to each other once a week. They're not allowed to communicate with the outside world at all, except for one time a year where they are allowed to send up to seven letters at Christmas. And if you want some more info about Carthusian monks to brighten your day, once they pass away, the other monks dig a grave in the courtyard where they are then buried in an unmarked grave. Green Chartreuse retails for around $65 in the United States, but good luck finding it at that price point or at all. Recently, Chartreuse has been allocated. Now, allocation can be a little bit tricky because it can mean different things depending on where you live, but basically the current supply cannot meet demand. So in the United States, because of our unique and weird alcohol laws, it's kind of up to distributors on where the products end up and distributors will often give preference to their loyal customers, many of which sell a high volume of chartreuse or the distributor's other products. So why won't the monks just make more? Well, while the monks live in silence, they did recently release a statement about the future availability of chartreuse. In that statement, they said that they would not increase production and would instead limit production to focus on their primary goal, to protect their monastic life and devote their time to solitude in prayer. There are two main types of modern chartreuse, green and yellow. Typically, if a recipe does not specify the color, it's usually in reference to the green chartreuse. Green comes in at a hefty 55% ABV and the yellow is 40%. Yellow is also sweeter and a little milder in flavor. Both are colored naturally, or so they say. Uh, I actually asked a monk once to confirm this and he just looked at me in complete silence. While the color difference is obvious, the labels are extremely similar. So if you're in a dimly lit room, check the ABV to verify which one is which. The taste of chartreuse is indescribable. It's herbal and sweet in a good way, but it tastes like nothing else and I think that it can't be substituted. I hate to use the word herbal because for me that can be a turnoff sometimes, but it's delicious. In a cocktail or even on its own, it is heavenly. It is most famously used in The Last Word, which while often called a Prohibition era cocktail, it was actually first created back in 1916. But today we'll be doing something a little more modern by making a chartreuse swizzle, which was created by Marco Dionysus in the early 2000s in San Francisco. This one has a bit of a Bay Area history as well that I did not know about. And I found most of this through a article on Rob Report. Years after creating the drink, Dionysus was hired by Michael Mina who's maybe the most prolific San Francisco chef and restaurateur. Also, if you're not from the Bay Area, when you come, make sure you refer to it as San Fran or Frisco. That's how you'll fit in. So Marco eventually makes this drink for Michael Mina, who loves it, and puts it on menus across his vast restaurant empire. Eventually, it's a worldwide sensation. For this one, you will need lime juice, pineapple juice, Velvet Falernum and Green Chartreuse. And we can go ahead and build this straight into our glass with three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. One 
one ounce of pineapple juice. Half an ounce of velvet falernum. And one and a half ounces of green chartreuse. Go ahead and add some ice to your glass, and then we're gonna use a swizzle to swizzle this drink. But you could totally use a bar spoon here instead. Garnish with a pineapple frond, a cherry, and really whatever else you want. So one quick note on making this drink is you could totally just shake this in your cocktail shaker instead. Uh, it's called a swizzle, so I thought it's a good chance to break out the swizzle stick and make a, a real swizzle. So let's try it. It like comes across a lot sweeter than you would think it is. Chartreuse does have some sweetness to it, and as well as our pineapple juice in here. Now, out of all the chartreuse drinks I've ever had, this is definitely one of the most chartreuse forward drinks. It even uh, overpowers some of the pineapple, which is like a, a crazy thing. Usually when pineapple's in a drink, you're getting so much pineapple, but it just plays together really well with the sharpness of the lime juice and the sweetness of the pineapple juice. And then you're just really getting chartreuse. And that's why I, I really do love this drink. But if you're really looking to showcase chartreuse, this is a great example because you don't have another spirit in there that is sort of competing against a chartreuse. And at 55% ABV and an ounce and a half, that's a real cocktail. This isn't something that's a little lower proof because we're using a liqueur. We're using a higher proof liqueur here. I mean, the one note I would give you on this, if you don't like chartreuse, you will not like this drink. Uh, it's not lost at all. It is like in your face, green chartreuse, and um, I love it, but uh, you know, it's not gonna be for everyone. So there you go, the chartreuse swizzle. That's it for this one. I'm Derek, this is Making Drink. If you enjoyed the video and you want to help out, just uh, like the video below. Subscribe to the channel if you want to. And if you want to learn more or check out some other cocktails with green chartreuse, check out these videos right here. See you on the next one.